In this video, we are forecasting a snowstorm that will dump several inches from the mountains of California all the way up through the UP of Michigan. This same storm will produce a severe weather outbreak on the southern side. The Storm Prediction Center has already issued an enhanced risk of severe weather with a 10% chance of significant tornadoes. We're going to break down every aspect of this storm so you can stay ahead of it. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. There is an unbelievable amount of weather to talk about today, but I'm going to focus on that one big storm that's going to be coming across the U.S. over the next few days. We're going to start off talking about the snow in the north, and then we're going to talk about the severe weather threat, and finally, we will talk about everyone else in between at the end of the video. So buckle up and get ready to talk about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America, and as you can see, there are a couple areas of interest right now. First of all, if we zoom into the Midwest and the Great Lakes regions, we've got some snow showers and some flurries out here, especially in northeastern Iowa, working its way into Wisconsin. Uh, this is going to continue to progress east and bring some snow to Michigan and then eventually over here into Canada but for the most part this is not going to be much. Now when we focus our sights on the west things get a little bit more serious. First of all we got a stream of moisture coming into the Pacific Northwest that starts today and it will not end anytime soon from Seattle to Portland and of course the mountainous regions around there there's going to be an incredible amount of rain and snow fall over the next week. This could be a dangerous situation with all the flooding and the mudslides uh, and additionally there's going to be a lot of snow in the higher elevations like in an abnormal amount, okay? And then right now, it's raining in the Central Valley of California. That rain is moving down towards Los Angeles and it's turning into snow whenever it meets the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Also, we're gonna see quite a bit of snow up here and that snow is gonna continue to be dumped over the Rocky Mountains as it heads east and this is our next big storm. Let's start tracking it on the weather models. All right, now we're looking at the NAM three kilometer starting on the West Coast. And once again, this video, guys, we're gonna be focusing on this storm right here. Remember, if you wanna keep up with the date and time, it's always displayed above my head in Eastern time, cause that's where I'm from. And around 10 a.m. Eastern today, there's gonna be widespread heavy snow across the Rocky Mountains and rain, once again, moving into the Southern California area. It's gonna be snowing incredibly heavy through the Rocky Mountains in Nevada, all the way into Utah, moving into Wyoming, and Colorado around 10 a.m. Then if we just go a little bit into the future, we're talking about this evening, 6 p.m., it's going to be snowing incredibly heavy in the mountains of Nevada and Utah and Colorado, and of course in Southern Wyoming as well. We've got mostly rain down here on the Southern side, but of course in Arizona and New Mexico, as this progresses to the East, we are going to see some snow in the higher elevations. I think the sweet spot for snow is definitely gonna be in the Western side of Colorado, uh, where some of those mountaintops are gonna pick up uh, over two feet of snow. All that Pacific moisture is getting frozen and just dumped on them mountains uh, by uh, 2 a.m. Friday, December 10th. It's still going to be snowing heavily over there. And then finally, probably around noon on Friday, we're finally going to have this thing out of the West, okay? Just some lingering snow showers here from Idaho down through Colorado and into New Mexico. It's going to hit fast, it's going to hit hard, and it's going to be out of your hair right after that. Total snowfall amounts during this time period are off the charts over here. Once again, in western Colorado, the higher up in the air you go, the more snow you're going to get. Some people are going to see over two feet of snow. Same thing here in the mountains of uh, Utah. And then of course in the Sierra Nevada mountains over here in uh, California, you know, a foot of snow or more possible widespread through the Rocky Mountains. Okay, shifting our focus over into the central portion of the U.S. Here's our big storm coming in, 5 p.m. Thursday, December 9th, snow showers are gonna start working into the northwestern portion of Nebraska and southeastern portions of Wyoming. Once again, these snow showers are gonna be heavy at times as that low pressure system now starts getting access to Gulf moisture, uh, expanding these snow showers once again as they approach into South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa. And then check this out, as we get into around 3 p.m. on Friday, December 10th, uh, we're going to have very heavy snow in Iowa, South Dakota, uh, Minnesota, and Nebraska here. Once again, this could be intermittent blizzard conditions here as we do expect wind gusts to be around 35 to 40 mile an hour here and there as that low pressure system slides by. Also, we've got some mixed precipitation down here in southwestern Iowa, that, which could lead to a very small amount of ice accumulation and sleet, uh, but this is not an ice storm. I wouldn't be too concerned about that. As we get into 7 p.m. on Friday, December 10th, once again, extremely heavy snow now moving into the central Wisconsin area. It's been hanging out there in northern Iowa for a while, putting down uh, pretty good totals as we go forward. Green Bay, Wisconsin looks to be right there next to the rain line, but I think you're going to stay all snow for this storm. However, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, it's going to be tough for you guys. You guys are going to see a little bit of rain, a little bit of snow. This is going to be a very uh, hard uh, storm to forecast there in Madison uh, because you're right on the line between rain and snow. Uh, but up here in Eau Claire, especially in northern Wisconsin, you guys are going to get clobbered with snow and even 
even into the upper peninsula of Michigan. I think you guys are definitely going to see a widespread area with 10 inches of snow or more. And then let's watch this thing progress all the way out. There's going to be one final shot of snow that comes through Michigan during the day on Saturday, but that's pretty much it. We can watch this progress all the way until the last frame of the NAM. And as you can see, the warm air is really going to take over here in the Northeast and it's just going to be all rain pretty much. Even in Canada, from Toronto to up to Ottawa, you guys are just going to see rain from this and maybe one little blast of snow as the back edge comes by later Saturday into Sunday. Snow totals out here show a very large streak of three to six inches from Nebraska all the way through the UP of Michigan with embedded areas of eight to 10 inches possible, especially there in Southern Minnesota uh, through central Wisconsin. And once again, in the UP of Michigan, here is the Euros take on this storm. Okay. So it looks pretty similar until you get over here to the Great Lakes region, uh, right there around Green Bay, Wisconsin. We do think that uh, it's possible to see over a foot of snow if we're going by the Euro, uh, which is a good model to look at this time of year. And then the GFS really shows a big difference in a more Northern track and a higher snow totals for the vast majority of Southern Minnesota, Wisconsin into the UP of uh, Michigan. Once again, a widespread area over 10 inches, um, over a foot of snow even uh, in Wisconsin there. And everything's just a little bit further North on the GFS. So I think we're gonna get a mixture of this somewhere in between. My favorite run is the Euro. If I was making a snowfall forecast, I would base it off of the Euro model. And if we zoom out and look at everything, look at all that snow over there in the Pacific Northwest up into British Columbia. You guys are literally gonna get buried with snow over the next few days. And then of course we have our snowstorm that we're tracking here. That is gonna bring significant totals, uh, maybe eight to 12 inches into the Sault Ste. Marie area all the way through Sudbury. And then of course, uh, as time goes on, that will continue on into Quebec as well and bring some snow into South Central portions of that wonderful Canadian province. Now it's time to stop talking about snow and start talking about severe weather. But first, let's thank the sponsor of this video, Helicity.co, the weather superstore. Helicity.co is the world's number one source of weather-related clothing, accessory, and home products. These guys have a little bit of everything, seriously. And through personal experience, I know that this stuff makes really good gifts for weather nerds, weather geeks, weather weenies. I personally own one of everything. It's where I get my canvas prints of the radar images and you know stuff like this. It is awesome, high quality and unique. And of course they are supporting the channel here. So if you wanna support my channel and also get something awesome in return, go to helicity.co with the link in the description and use the discount code Ryan Hall y'all to save 5% off your entire order. Okay, let's get back to the video. All right, now we're talking about the potential major severe weather outbreak that's gonna come out of this storm system. The Storm Prediction Center has put out a very large enhanced risk of severe weather uh, for Friday. This includes Greenville, Mississippi, up through Memphis, all the way up the I-55 corridor into southeastern portions of Missouri. Uh, also Nashville, Tennessee, you're included in this. And almost to Louisville, uh, Kentucky, but definitely Evansville, Indiana, that area is included in this. If you're in this yellow circle, you have a 10% chance of significant tornadoes. We're talking about maybe a couple long track violent tornadoes. And then even outside of that, if we look at the whole avocado here, you got a 5% chance in Louisville. You've got a 5% chance down here in Shreveport, Louisiana. In the central highlighted area, the orange there, we have a 30% chance of significant damaging wind, 15% chance in the larger circle, 5% outside of that. And then of course we have a widespread 5% hail chance. So the hail threat is actually pretty low during this severe weather setup, but this is what the Storm Prediction Center is thinking. Let me explain why on the weather models. All right, here's a look at the East Coast now, looking at the NAM three kilometer. We are focusing on the severe weather outbreak down here. Uh, this is the simulated radar. It's what the radar could look like as we go into the future. So let's go ahead and watch the progression here as we go later into the day on Friday. So as you can see, a lot of the morning on Friday, it's just gonna be warming up. You can see the general direction of the air just by following these little showers that pop up and it's just screaming, okay? We've got a bunch of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico streaming up to the north and east. However, notice that in the severe weather outlook area, there is no storms around this time. Usually in a big severe weather outbreak, you see storms firing by at least 6 p.m. And uh, of course, we don't have any here, all right? We're still dealing uh, with that warm air building up and waiting on the cold front to come through and uh, kind of initialize some of those bigger storms to spark up. So we have to actually go all the way out to 3 a.m. before we really start to see a lot of storms popping up. Now, I do think that we're gonna see some storms pop 
up before 3 a.m. Uh, but according to the NAM 3 kilometer, widespread severe weather will not start happening until 3 a.m. So talk about a nighttime severe weather event. Uh, this is definitely going to be one of them. We have an interesting area of strong storms forming down here in uh, eastern Texas into northern Louisiana. And of course, we have our main line of storms forming from Indiana down through Arkansas. And then we have a couple of areas that look interesting over here along the Ohio River Valley. Uh, and these are the ones that look uh, like they could maybe become tornadic in nature to me. Okay, there's going to be an area of storms that pop up ahead of the main line uh, where, you know, if they're discreet, enough they will probably become supercell thunderstorms and those are the ones that we have to watch uh, for the potential for once again long track violent tornadoes now the nam three kilometer currently has those uh kind of focused in the ohio river valley there uh literally along the border of kentucky indiana and ohio but i wouldn't put too much faith in this okay this little area of storms could end up being a little bit further south in here it could be displaced a little bit further east it's this whole area that has to watch out for severe weather we don't need to look at each uh, model run as okay this is definitely what's going to happen however we are going to see an area of uh, supercells pop up and wherever those happen we could be talking about tornadoes because look at this like I was talking about earlier a constant influx of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico is going to lead to dew points in the upper 60s for a lot of people in the south here and even way up into Cincinnati at 63 are you kidding me on December 11th we got a 64 degree dew point here near um, uh, you know uh, Louisville Kentucky uh, and then a dry line a massive dry line with dew points in the 20s forcing that moisture up into the air and this is why we think that even though this is happening overnight and you know typically that means that the severe weather threat goes down we still think that there's going to be a good severe weather threat here because of all the forcing that's happening to make these storms occur additionally if we look at the lower level jet stream this is what i refer to as tornado juice there is a lot of it out there okay we have lower level jet stream winds around 70 knots in portions of uh, kentucky and tennessee up through ohio you can Combine this lower level jet stream with a supercell thunderstorm and it is almost certainly going to rotate it's almost certainly going to have some spin to it and it's uh, and it's this stuff right here uh, that could cause once again maybe some long track violent tornadoes uh, early in, in the morning on Saturday now if we put all of these ingredients together and make a model called the significant tornado parameter this is going to show us on a scale of 1 to 10 essentially of how favorable the atmosphere is to create tornadoes and here we are at 9 p.m. on Friday we have some really strong uh, you know, significant tornado parameters down here in Arkansas and Louisiana. However, around this time, it's it's likely that we won't have any thunderstorms. So you can have high SIG tour parameters all day long, but if there are no thunderstorms there to take advantage of those parameters, uh, then there's no tornadoes, right? This area of favorable weather for tornadoes is going to drift off to the north. And, you know, it looks like very likely some of the strongest uh, parameters are going to meet up with those storms right here in western Kentucky and southern Indiana around 3 a.m. And that's where we have to, you know, watch very closely for the formation of uh, tornadoes and that's going to carry all the way through central Kentucky into middle Tennessee uh, but the threat goes down a lot as we go later on into the early morning hours on Saturday uh, as this will very quickly become a straight line of storms so once again let's watch that progression some of those big storms popping up in the overnight and early morning hours on Saturday let's go all the way to 10 a.m. and it's around this time where I think that the tornado threat is going to start going down significantly and we are mainly going to be talking about a straight line damaging wind threat here as this massive line of storm uh, goes off to the uh, south and east. Now, the storms will be less intense in the north here. So if you're in Ohio or northeastern Kentucky or anything like that, I do think that the, your chance of seeing like a bad storm with thunder and lightning and hail and, you know, embedded tornadoes and stuff, I think your chance of seeing that is lower. But if we come out here and we take a look at that lower level jet stream one more time, you can see that it's very enhanced over here in this region. So, of course, that does mean that we have to continue to watch out for the isolated tornado but a lot of this wind might be funneled down by that line of storms in the form of uh, widespread straight line damaging winds through here. So uh, even, you know, even though there's not a lot of instability up here in the north for storms, definitely big time winds are going to be possible with this as we go forward. So watch out for that. And that line of storms is going to carry itself all the way into West Virginia, Kentucky, Eastern Tennessee, and of course into Central Alabama as well as we go into the day on Saturday. Tomorrow I'll have an update and we'll talk about whether or not we see a re-sparking of this severe weather as it heads a little bit further east. All right, but for now, let's talk about everyone else, okay? So if you're not getting the massive snowstorm or the severe weather, what's happening in between here, okay? You know, we, we gotta show some love to everybody else too. First of all, once again, the Pacific Northwest, you're getting clobbered with rain and snow, okay? It don't matter, nothing matters, okay? It's just rain, snow, rain, snow, rain, 
and snow. If you're up here in the plains of Montana and North Dakota, uh, on up into Manitoba and Saskatchewan and Alberta, uh, you guys are going to be staying high and dry for the most part. Now down here where our big storm is going on, okay, <laughs> in the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma and western Kansas over here, you guys are literally, the storm is on top of you. Uh, you've got heavy snow out to your west, big time severe weather getting ready to happen out, off to your east. But what, what's going on with you? Literally nothing, okay? <laughs> uh, Texas, Oklahoma, you guys are literally dodging a bullet with this one as the storm just kind of misses you like there's a force field around you. However, there is a different threat for you guys uh, where you could see wind gusts around 50 mile an hour in northern Texas up into the panhandle of Oklahoma, all of western Oklahoma, 30, 40 mile an hour. Winds are going to be coming through and that's going to follow the low pressure system up into the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes regions as well. Look at this, 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts in northern Indiana up through Michigan on Saturday around 1 p.m. And of course, that is also going to follow it up into the northeast as well, where especially in the higher elevations, we could see wind gusts as high as uh, 60 miles an hour as the storm scrapes the mountain with that very, very strong lower level jet stream. And outside of that, pretty much everybody else is just getting some general rain, okay? A lot of the northeast here is going to be all rain for this storm, but Maine, you might start off with a little bit of mixed precipitation there on Saturday. But the way this storm is organized is you got your warm front, you got your cold front, and you know, all that warm air is just going all the way up into the northeast. So you guys are just warm city, and then, you know, you get your heavy rain, and then boom, it does cool off a little bit. Just to set the stage for our massive a heat ridge building up here in the central US that we will certainly talk about more uh, in later videos, okay? So, man, that's that's pretty much it. That is all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you once again to Helicity for sponsoring this video. This is kind of my first ever sponsored video. Some of you may not like it, but I promise it's gonna help make these videos better and it's gonna help me make them more often. So please, if you wanna support me, go support them and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.